hosted by the National Renewable Energy Laboratory. Today's webinar is focused on carbon capture, utilization, and storage in Mexico for low carbon economies. Before we begin, I'll quickly go over some of the webinar features. For audio, you have two options. You may either listen through your computer or over your telephone. If you choose to listen through your computer, please select the mic and speakers option in the audio pane. If you choose to dial in by phone, please select the telephone option on the box on the right side will display the telephone number and audio pen you should use to dial in. If anyone's having any technical difficulties with the webinar, you may contact the GoToWebinars help desk at 888-259-3826 for assistance. If you'd like to ask a question, we ask that you use the questions pane where you may type it in. Also, the recording of today's presentation will be added to the YouTube channel at the link provided on the slide. Today's webinar agenda is centered around the presentations on the new STEM initiative on carbon capture, utilization, and storage. Before we launch into the presentations, I'll provide a quick introduction of today's panelists. Then following the panelists' presentations, we'll have a question and answer session where the panelists will address questions submitted by the audience. Now I'd like to introduce our speakers. First up, we have Deputy Minister Leonardo Beltran, who is the Deputy Minister for Planning and Energy Transition for Mexico's Ministry of Energy. Following the Deputy Minister, we'll hear from Dr. Diego Arahana, who is the Executive Director of, of the Mexico CCUS Center and Director General of the National Institute for Electricity and Clean Energy. Following Diego, we will hear from Guillermo Hernandez Gonzalez, who is the Energy Specialist at World Bank. And our final speaker today is Peter Warren. Peter is a Senior po Policy Advisor and Senior Climate Investment Lead at the Department for Business and Energy and Inter Industrial Strategy for the UK Government. And with those brief introductions, I'd like to welcome the Deputy Minister Beltran to the webinar. Thanks very much, Katie. This is uh, Leonard Beltran. Uh, good morning to all of you. And uh, I have uh, today the honor of presenting a little bit of what we are doing in Mexico regarding carbon capture, use, and storage. And I will start with a brief introduction. Uh, back in 2009, uh, Mexico started to look at, the, at this technology as a way to reduce greenhouse gas emissions in the energy sector. Uh, at that point in time, there was a policy document that had to be uh, approved by Congress called the National Energy Strategy. And within the National Energy Strategy in, in 2010, we started with the introduction of this technology, again, as a way to reduce greenhouse gas emissions in, um, uh, across the board, and uh, in particular, creating a sustainable energy sector uh, uh, for uh, Mexico. Then, uh, in 2012, we started uh, discussions that resulted in the approval of the General Act on Climate Change. The General Act on Climate Change is uh, the first piece of legislation that incorporates this technology, uh, that incorporates uh, the efforts of the energy sector and uh, all the productive sectors into uh, an act that is uh, binding for the government and that it includes uh, medium and long-term targets for greenhouse gas emissions. This is the result of the discussion uh, that took place in Cancun back in 2010 with the COP16, uh, the UNFCCC COP16. Then in 2013, we started with uh, the discussions of the energy reform that we engaged in the administration of Mr. President uh, Peña Nieto. And uh, today, we have included in the energy reform the uh, sustainability as a principle, and as part of this principle, the inclusion of 
clean uh, generation technologies in an act uh, that it's called the uh, energy the electricity industry act so today uh, it not only uh, is present into a general act on climate change binding for all the government but in particular for the energy sector we have included uh, this uh, technology uh, as as part of the mandate and as part of the opportunity to uh, uh, take into account a, te a technology that can reduce uh, the environmental footprint of the energy sector. Uh, another piece of context for uh, this technology in Mexico is uh, besides the legal framework, we have uh, now uh, a few documents that state uh, first, what's the potential in terms of storage for Mexico, in particular in two, um, two specific locations in, this, uh, in the coast of Mexico, near the Gulf uh, of Mexico. Um, that is the first document, the, the image that you see where it says Atlas. Then uh, we have uh, collaborated with our colleagues from the United States and Canada to develop the North American Carbon Storage Atlas, the NAXA. So that's the first uh, exercise, trilateral exercise, that includes the uh, quantification of the storage potential for the region. Then uh, we decided to move on to a technology roadmap uh, where we can have uh, different components, uh, not only the legal framework, but uh, technology, uh, the incorporation of uh, the academic sector, science in particular, uh, you know, research institutions and academic institutions to join and help uh, develop the technology and help lay the ground to um, the uptake of this technology uh, across the board. And uh, as part of this exercise, we are developing an innovation center in, on this technology with the participation of the private sector, academic sector, uh, research institutions, and uh, of course the, uh, the government uh, across the, the board. Uh, this year, we published the update of what we have been doing since the uh, publication of the technology roadmap. So today we have a few uh, updates that we would like to share with you that um, my colleague Diego Arjona will, um, will expand upon. But I would like uh, also to give you another piece of um, a background uh, as part of our international uh, commitments reflected today into our domestic uh, legal framework, we have uh, some targets for uh, this year, for 2024 and 2050. Uh, today, uh, we, we are about to reach the 25% uh, clean generation target. Uh, if we continue in this path, we will be able to reach 35% by 2024, and half of our consumption will come from clean energies by 2050. That translated into uh, CO2 reduction uh, means that by 2030, we will be reducing 22% our greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, uh, with the baseline of 2005, and by 2050, we will be able to reduce uh, a little over one third of every uh, emission that Mexico has uh, as part of the uh, commitments that Mexico endorses under the uh, UNFCCC uh, agreement, the Paris Agreement. So um, let me get back just uh, a little bit on the technology roadmap. Uh, as I was mentioning, we published uh, this document that incorporates uh, several items 
uh, if we are to continue into this road. Uh, first, we have to have a legal framework that it's uh, a that it, that it makes operational the uh, inclusion of the of this technology as a clean uh, as a clean technology. So we have uh, signed an agreement between uh, three institutions and the Mexican Department of Energy, the, uh, the Ministry of Environment, Pemex, and the, our national oil company and uh, Comisión Federal de Electricidad, uh, another a national utility. Uh, and the framework is to make sure that uh, the energy sector, along with uh, these uh, large entities, with the help of the Ministry of Environment, work together towards uh, undertaking the challenge of incorporating this technology into day-to-day -day operations of these companies. Then the second item that we uh, incorporated into the technology roadmap is the uh, creation of an interdepartmental group uh, that incorporates 18 national institutions from the government, academia, and uh, industry to um, understand what's the uh, baseline for this technology, what's the understanding uh, in the private sector, in the academic sector, and in regulation, and then uh, develop uh, some uh, targets. Uh, let me say it like this, a north in which uh, we see where to head for this technology. Uh, the third component, besides having a robust legal framework, uh, an interdepartmental uh, or interinstitutional agreement, a CCUS working group uh, team, we decided to do uh, an analysis of the Mexican regulatory framework to make sure that uh, it's not only classified these as a clean technology, but it also includes uh, a specific technological uh, or technology items uh, that take care takes care of the environment. And uh, for this particular exercise, we have uh, developed a Mexican mandatory standard on on this technology, and we are in the process of. Uh, taking part into the International Standards Organization uh, uh, standard uh, for this uh, technology. And the fourth item under the technology roadmap is uh, international collaboration. And uh, we think that the international collaboration for this technology in particular, but in general for the energy sector, is key if we are to meet our de our goals uh, in the mid and long term. We have uh, developed uh, international cooperation with uh, the carbon uh, the uh, carbon storage uh, carbon sequestration leadership uh, forum, the Global Carbon Capture and Storage uh, Institute, Mission Innovation, the North American Energy Ministers Trilateral which will be happening uh, this week in, in Mexico. The Car Carbon Capture Use and Storage Initiative of the Clean Energy Ministerial, and bilateral and uh, trilateral agreements with the United States and Canada, and of course, bilateral uh, collaboration with the United Kingdom, Norway, Australia, and Saudi Arabia. Uh, now, uh, Besides doing this technology roadmap that uh, sets, up, sets, sets us up into uh, this framework of um, an existing legal framework, uh, technology uh, collaboration, and international cooperation, we have set up a national carbon capture use and storage strategy, which basically assesses the uh, potential uh, of uh, different uh, fields 
for storing CO2 permanently or uh, using and storing uh, the CO2 in, in different parts of the, the country. Basically, we started with uh, the assessment of deep sailing aquifers. And the second uh, exercise that we conducted, or we are conducting, is the assessment of oil and gas fields for CO2 enhanced oil recovery. Uh, next, we are uh, assessing the opportunity in power plant uh, power plants uh, to make sure that uh, we can uh, translate this good use of uh, of CO2 uh, and uh, reduce the environmental footprint of the power sector. And finally, we will explore these uh, same opportunities, but in uh, large uh, CO2 sources, uh, mainly industrial activities. Uh, and as part of this strategy, besides doing uh, an assessment of the opportunities for use and storage, we have now uh, developed uh, two pilot projects that will be coming onto stream uh, later uh, next year uh, and within the next 18 months uh, that uh, we will have the opportunity there to learn a little bit more about uh, the opportunity in a natural uh, gas power plant and uh, the opportunity for using CO2 in uh, specific fields, uh, oil and gas fields in uh, Mexico. Uh, in addition to this, we have developed some capacity building uh, activities. First, uh, we started with the development of a master's degree program, uh, which is led by the National Autonomous University of Mexico, or uh, top university, in collaboration with the University of California at Berkeley and the Lawrence Berkeley National Lab. Uh, with them, we uh, also developed uh, a specialized training program on uh, carbon capture use and storage, more like a, a, an executive technical uh, diploma. Uh, and with those two, these two uh, capacity building programs, we are aiming to uh, translate uh, this, uh, the benefits of, of uh, developing talent into uh, interested uh, stakeholders that will populate uh, government, academia, and private sector institutions to make sure that uh, this is uh, well understood and the benefits of undertaking this technology uh, are not uh, um, uh, set aside uh, for uh, you know the uh, disconnection of the uh, technical people from uh, the benefits of of the technology. Uh, here it's a little bit more of the detail regarding the pilot projects and the uh, carbon capture use and storage innovation center. But I will leave uh, that to my colleague Diego Arjona to explain in uh, detail. I will just say that uh, we have invested uh, in the order of 80 to 100 million US dollars for uh, the creation of this uh, innovation center. Um, uh, but uh, we will touch upon in, in, uh, on, on this topic in the next presentation. Uh, this particular uh, slide will only uh, show you the interest we have and the importance that we assign to international collaboration on this technology. Uh, we are, along with uh, the United States, the United Kingdom, and Norway, the only four countries that collaborate on the Clean Energy Ministerial the Oil and Gas Climate Initiative, Mission Innovation, 
the Global Carbon Capture and Storage Institute, the International Energy Agency, and the Carbon Sequestration Leadership Forum as a way to advance uh, knowledge, uh, uh, information sharing, and of course the development of uh, clean technologies. And I, uh, I also would like to mention that uh, Mexico now is uh, co-leading along with uh, Saudi Arabia and the United Kingdom, uh, the carbon capture use and storage uh, initiative under the Clean Energy Ministerial. And with that, I really appreciate uh, the time and the opportunity to share with you a little bit of what we are doing on carbon capture use and storage. And the floor goes to the end. Thank you very much, Leonardo. Uh, uh, what I would like to do in, in the time that I have, and I will try to be brief, is talk a little bit about uh, the National Institute for uh, Electricity and Clean Energy, and then talk about the 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 Mexican Center for for carbon capture, use, and storage. So. Uh, the National Institute for, for Electricity and Clean Energy was created in 1975, and then as the Electricity Research Institute, and then two years ago it was changed, and it became the National Institute for Electricity and Clean Energy. Uh, in this institute, we have working uh, over 1,000 people, and what we do is work in all topics that relate to electricity, and the generation of power in the country. Uh, we are running uh, several of the, well, the, the, the Mexican government, the CONACYT, our National Council for Science and Technology, and the Ministry of Energy have created um, a policy to try to generate a collaborative work from institutions in, the, in, in Mexico, from various institutions in Mexico. And these are called the National Centers for Energy innovation. Actually, it's an, an initiative that has been a, a pushed by by Leonardo, and it has been very successful in the in the last six years that, that it has been under implementation. Our institute is running the the, the center for wind energy, the center for a, a intelligent for smart grids for intelligent networks and also the Center for Carbon Capture, Use, and Storage, which is the one that we are going to talk about today. The center uh, has been awarded a, a grant in order to operate. And what I'm showing in the presentation right now is the members of the center, how the, the confirmation of the center has been established. And it will explain the, the project that we are going to be uh, running in a moment. But if you see the members, you will see that we have a various a institutions, both from Mexico and outside of the border of Mexico. A, this includes a, academic institutions, research centers, and even a private companies which are working on, on, on different topics, which are very rele relevant to carbon capture or to the use of research. Also, you will see that we have an advisory committee. The advisory committee is including some people uh, who come from various institutions and who have shown a uh, leadership at the international level in, in all terms of, of knowledge, which become really important. Uh, if you look at the, at the lower part of this graph, you will see the description of pilot projects. And actually the main objective of the of research objective of, the, of this center is to generate Infrastructure for research into topics, which I will explain in a moment. Well, first, if we look at the at the issue of the structure and the projects, research and development and innovation will be run on carbon capture processes, uh, the use of CO2 in enhanced oil recovery, which is a, a, a relevant topic for part of our industry. Of course, other uses of CO2. A, how to transport CO2, compression and, and transport. Of course, there goes the issue of how pure CO, CO2 is in order to be transported and the cost of, of um, 
perhaps um, a CO2 of, of, of different quality. Of course, the issue of carbon storage is very relevant. And monitoring, measurement, verification, and integrity of storage. Uh, as we talk about infrastructure, the idea is to generate two, uh, two very important projects uh, in, in this sense. The first one would be a carbon capture pilot plant, and the second one, an enhanced oil recovery pilot plant. And both of them will, will help in, to support the National Laboratory of Carbon Capture and Use for CO2. Well, if I could show you where the carbon capture plant is going to be, uh, if you're looking at the plant, you will see Poza Rica, as the, uh, both in the state of Veracruz, but you will see Poza Rica to the north as the place for the carbon capture plant. The National Utility the Federal Power Commission has a, a facility in Poza Rica for generation. And in this facility is where we are going to establish the, the carbon capture facility. And the idea is that we are going to, uh, to capture carbon from a power plant that is using a natural gas at this moment as fuel. So there is a difference with some other facilities in the world, which are using, a, which are uh, taking it from, from generation of coal. So there's going to be a difference in the amounts of, of CO2 that we're going to find, because as, as you probably know, if you go into a coal power plant, the flue gas that you're going to find is usually a flue gas that goes into the 11 to 13 percent range. Well, in, in natural gas, you're going to find 4 percent, 3 percent, 5 percent, depending on how the flue gas is developed. So there's going to be a change in the amount of, of, of a air that we're going to use in order to capture the same amount of, of CO2. But then the, the interesting point, the interesting point about this is that uh, in this facility, we're also going to try to examine the use of renewable energy in order to support this. So one of the issues is to generate a, a solar collector in order to, uh, to generate heat for, for the use of, of, of the facility. Uh, what we're going to do with this facility is to generate a, a way to do to do uh, uh, to do uh, sorbents. So we're going to try at least with three sorbents. But of course, once we have the facility established, what we're going to, to do is generate the capacity and have an open space for other sorbents that could be used in order to, to do this. But also, if you consider what we're going to do is that we will have a place where we have the full system in order to take flue gas from the power plant, and in turn that will allow us to, to try other techniques that may, be, that may be used for carbon uh, separation, like nanomolecular membranes or, you know, the different options that, that might come in the future from this. And in the second a facility that you see in the lower part, which is the Brillante oil field, what we are going to have is, is the, the, the technology to place a CO2 underground. We are going to experiment in that place with the with the idea of using it for enhanced oil recovery, but we are also going to use it for the idea of leaving it as geological sequestration in the same place. So, if you look at the at the next graph, we have a brief a graph describing both uh, projects that we are that we are planning at the moment. Uh, the carbon capture pilot plant, as you can see, the idea is a post combustion CO two capture. So uh, it would be quite interesting, and probably in the future we'll try to 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 do things with oxycombustion or with a uh, pre-combustion in order to to capture CO2. But this moment, the facility, as it's going to be designed uh, to begin with, is going to be designed as a post-combustion CO2 capture uh, site. Um, the idea is to capture about 20 tons of CO2 per day. That would be the capacity. But actually, the, the, the main idea, as I was mentioning, is not so much for the production of CO2, which is not what we are aiming with this facility, but to try all different techniques and all different materials uh, that can be used in order to, to perform this and to understand very well the cost uh, that might be associated with the different options. Also, we are going to learn a lot about the, the 
the power plant and how it will relate to the fact that we are going to take uh, the CO2 out of it, as we'll try to, to force the, the exhaust storm so that we can see what happens to the, to, the, to the different parts of the power plant as we are doing it. Well, uh, of course, as we go into the, the, the enhanced solar recovery, the, the pilot, this is going to be done in a site that is owned by the Mexican oil company, Pemex. Uh, what we're going to do is the test of Hop and Puff. Uh, and of course, the idea of the injection wells. So uh, with these two projects, we believe that we are going to have a, a lot of information in order to take decisions in the future, to be able to advise the Ministry of Energy or the, or the Mexican oil company or the other companies that are going to be participating in the, in the oil market in Mexico or the Federal Power Commission or the, all the other companies that are going to be participating in the power sector in Mexico into the different options that we have to reduce uh, CO2 from this facility. So uh, we're working at this moment with the, with the National Council for Science and Technology and the hydrocarbon funds, which is operated by the Ministry of Energy. But we're also uh, working with the World Bank. And the idea is to have uh, the World Bank involved, in not only because, the, because of the economic support, which is obviously quite appreciated, but also because of the, of the technical expertise that they can bring into the table and the support that they can provide in order to determine the different aspects of the project. And uh, with that, I'm trying not to abuse my time. I will give the, the space to Guillermo. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, the Subsecretary Beltran and Dr. Diego. Um, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Guillermo Hernandez, and I'm here to share with you uh, the, the engagement that the World Bank has had uh, with the government of Mexico on CCUS uh, in the recent years. Um, first, I would like to mention that CCUS is part of the long-term engagement that the World Bank has had with the Mexican government in support of Mexico's ambitious targets on clean energy and greenhouse gas emissions reduction, which is aligned with the World Bank goals of eliminating extreme poverty and boosting shared prosperity in a sustainable manner. Just a quick uh, a few examples of, in, of uh, uh, engagement uh, that, that we have had in the recent years. Uh, we have supported a number of projects on residential and municipal energy efficiency, rural electrification with renewable energy, and solar therm solar wind and solar thermal power at the utility scale. Um, so moving on to uh, well, CCUS, let me start uh, by saying that the the World Bank is um, supporting CCUS through the implementation of uh, of, uh, of a trust fund. We're we're uh, uh, supporting uh, a number of countries through the World Bank CCS Trust Fund, which was established in December 2009, with the main objectives of, uh, the main objectives are to support strengthening capacity and knowledge building, to create opportunities for developing countries to explore CCS potential, and to facilitate inclusion of CCS options uh, into developing country low carbon growth strategies and policies. I would take this opportunity to thank our, our uh, the, uh, donors or CCS trust fund donors, the UK government, the Norway government, and uh, uh, the Global CCS Institute, uh, which in in, in recent uh, in in recent months are, is is in the process of uh, withdrawing from this initiative, but um, uh, its its support uh, was a decisive one uh, for the first stage, which I'm about to explain in the next slide. So total funds allocation to date is uh, US 50, almost US 6, uh, 56 million across two different phases. So uh, let me talk a little bit about the, the two phases that we have supported uh, with this uh, trust fund. Phase number one was completed in 2015 uh, with, uh, with a small allocation, it, it was almost uh, 8 US million, 
and we supported nine countries and regions. And it was mostly analytical work where we provided capacity building and undertook desktop uh, CCUS studies and analysis. At the right hand side of the slide, you could see the, the countries uh, and regions that we supported. Uh, it was Botswana, South Africa, China, Mexico, Indonesia, Kosovo, Egypt, Jordan, and the Maghreb region in, in, in Africa. Um, now, based on, on, or based on and building upon those, uh, those analytical uh, studies and that analytical work, we moved on to phase two of this uh, World Bank CCS transfer, which started in 2014. Uh, with, with uh, allocated funds of uh, almost 48 US million. And it, we're focusing on South Africa and Mexico for the construction of actual pilot projects. Two of them are capture projects and two of them are storage projects. So this is um, a, a quick summary of the phase one uh, World Bank support in Mexico. It had a budget of uh, 1.3 million uh, US dollars and comprised the, the completion of five studies. Um, the, a pre-feasibility study for a capture pilot plant at a natural gas fire power station, which is the foundation for the pilot project at Costa Rica that, that uh, Dr. Arjona mentioned. Uh, second study was the assessment of monitoring and regulatory requirements for converting enhanced oil recovery sites into permanent CO2 storage sites which is the foundation of the storage project that we're pursuing in, in, in Mexico. Um, and we also support, provided support for the, this uh, study to establish a legal and regulatory framework for CCUS in, in the country. A fourth uh, study is the developing a, of a public uh, a engagement strategy. We started that in phase one and we are aiming to complete that in, in phase two, as well as uh, a, ser a number of initiatives to support capacity building efforts uh, where, wherever the opportunities arise. So based on this, or, or uh, using this, um, this uh, fifth um, line uh, uh, for our engagement, we have been able to um, provide support for uh, study tours for, uh, for a number of uh, government officials from the utility, from the oil company, from the government, from the Ministry of Energy and the Ministry of uh, Environmental uh, natural resources to uh, to Canada and to other countries so that they could they could um, learn from from those who have already built successfully built uh, pilot projects elsewhere in the world. This phase one was completed in 2015. And then uh, let me just briefly summarize phase two. Uh, Mr. Beltran and Mr. Horn already mentioned. About this, the phase two World Bank support for CCUS in Mexico will be led by CENER and by the National Institute of Electricity and Clean Energy, INEL. Uh, it will be supported by Pemex uh, and CFP and the Mexican Center for CCUS. And the total project budget will come from, it's a, it's a shared effort, uh, a US 12.5 million from the Mexican Hydrocarbon Fund and 20.5 million from the World Bank CCS Trans Fund. It will have two components, the capture pilot project in Costa Rica and the CO2 storage and in enhanced oil recovery monitoring project uh, in, um, in, in uh, Pemex oil field. Uh, this is a, a quick snapshot of the capture pilot project. I won't, uh, I won't uh, say too much. Already Dr. Arjona mentioned the key uh, features of this capture pilot project. It will be hosted in Costa Rica, Veracruz. It will be a post-combustion capture on a natural gas combined cycle power plant. Now, this is, this is important to mention that this is one of the, or the first uh, initiatives for a natural gas combined cycle power plant. In the past, there, there, there have been efforts and, and the, the, the technology has already been proved in coal-fired power plants. So this is, again, another example of a, of a leadership uh, for, from, the, from the Mexican government on pursuing uh, innovative solutions for uh, tackling climate change uh, issues. Uh, the size is 2.4 megawatts and it will capture about 20 tons of uh, carbon dioxide per day. Uh, 
Um, it will be a generic, flexible design to allow testing of a range of advanced amine technologies. Um, so we are support. Uh, we, we are we are supporting project preparation, and we will support construction and operation. And the total budget is uh, 27.5 US million. Then the Mexican CO2 storage and EOR monitoring project will be hosted by Pemex at the uh, Brillante oil facility in Veracruz. It will comprise a one week CO2 half and puff test. And if, as everyone expects, this uh, test is successful, we will proceed on a, on a two month CO2 injection test. Um, our support will be uh, in the amount of uh, one US million and we will be uh, providing CO2 storage and EOR injection and monitoring technical advice and uh, support. A quick, uh, quick uh, summary of uh, phase one World Bank support in CCS, uh, for CCS in Canada. The budget was similar to the one in Mexico, 1.35 million. It comprised five studies, regulatory review to enable the implementation of the pilot CO2 storage project techno-economic assessment of deployment of CCS technology in South Africa, capacity building of CCS in South Africa, and a national and local public engagement plan for the pilot CO2 storage project. It was completed in 2015. And in phase two, we are planning to, uh, uh, to support uh, uh, the CO2 capture pilot project and the CO2 storage project. This project is led by Saneri and is supported by the Department of Energy. The for Geoscience and Petroleum Agency of South Africa, and also by ESCOM. The total project budget here is uh, 15 million from the South African Department of Energy and 27.4 million from the World Bank CCS Trust Fund. Uh, a quick uh, note on the potential future CCS Trust Fund activity will be the consideration of the role of CCUS in industrial decarbonization. CCUS used in different industrial sectors such as high purity sources, cement, iron, steel, and refineries, and the CCUS use with different industrial fuels such as natural gas and biomass. We might be also interested in, in, in uh, developing an emerging economy, the potential for CCUS in industry, and to develop country case studies and lessons learned from CCUS in the industry. Of course, we are partnering with other, uh, with other institutions uh, such as IEA and the ADB. Um, as a final note, uh, I would like to say that we are proud to partner with the government of Mexico and with the donors to promote the full-scale development of this technology and to be part of the implementation of Mexico's uh, CCUS roadmap. And uh, I would like to take this opportunity to, to, to thank uh, Mr. Beltran on behalf of the, of the World Bank Energy team and his team for uh, his leadership and for his decisive support throughout the past years. And we remain committed towards maintaining a strong collaboration with the government of Mexico. And we look forward to the collaboration with INEL for the implementation of the second phase of the Mexico CCUS engagement. Thank you so much. Wonderful, thank you so much, Guillermo, for that presentation. Next up, we will be um, joined by Peter Warren. Peter, are you on the line? Hi, Katie, you can hear me okay? Yes, wonderful. Um, we have your slides up and we're ready to present. Okay, great. Um, well, thanks very much for, for this opportunity to uh, present. Um, and I have the final slot now, which I'll be uh, speaking about international collaboration as a driver to accelerate CCUS globally. Um, and particularly looking at um, what the UK is doing to uh, enable uh, in that international collaboration um, to achieve this. So on my, uh, on my first slide, uh, which is slide 34, um, I've got a map there which just shows uh, the current deployment of large-scale CCUS globally. And I thought it'd be useful to put the context behind where we are at the moment uh, on CCUS. Uh, we recently completed uh, an evidence review which showed that um, CCUS is absolutely crucial and we need to uh, make up 12 to 14 percent of global decarbonisation efforts uh, if we are to meet the uh, two degrees um, Paris Agreement target. Uh, if we don't do this, it will be at least more than 40% more expensive uh, to meet these targets without C2S. And one of the primary reasons um, for this figure is that um, C2S is not just about coal power, it has very wide applications. 
for decarbonizing uh, heavy industries such as iron and steel, petrochemicals, etc., uh, as well as forming um, a way to produce clean hydrogen, um, as well as decarbonizing uh, the full gas chain, so gas production, gas processing, gas power, um, and that's why we're uh, really interested to be um, fought in Mexico on the Poza Rica gas power plant to demonstrate um, carbon capture technology uh, for, for gas power applications. So on my uh, next slide, um, I just briefly wanted to um, talk about the benefits of uh, knowledge sharing and international collaboration. Um, so I think it's really crucial that um, as many countries as possible uh, engage with some of the uh, existing uh, initiatives such as uh, the Carbon Sequestration Leadership Forum, um, Mission Innovation uh, CCS Challenge, which uh, Mexico, the UK, and uh, Saudi Arabia are uh, co leads of, um, as well as the IEA, the Greenhouse Gas uh, R&D program. Um, but it's not just about these ex existing initiatives. I think it's important that um, countries share lessons learned from previous um, experiences with developing both pilot scale and large scale um, CCS plants across different sectors, um, as well as establishing um, you know, new initiatives, whether it's bilaterally or multilaterally, um, and also encouraging, you know, where possible, uh, more donors uh, beyond the UK, um, the, Glo uh, the Global CCS Institute in Norway, um, to provide that uh, support and finance to emerging economies such as Mexico, uh, South Africa and others um, to develop and deploy uh, CCS uh, globally. And it's not just about learning, I think, from the successes, but also the failures. Um, where pilot projects haven't worked, we can use those as ways to, um, to move forward. So on my uh, next slide, I just thought I'd give a, a couple of examples. Uh, I've already alluded to them uh, before, um, and also uh, previous presenters have, have mentioned these. Um, but like Mexico, the UK is part of the CQS initiative under the Clean Energy uh, Ministerial. Um, as, well, as well as uh, the Oil and Gas Climate Initiative, and I think these are ones that, um, that I didn't mention uh, in the previous slide. Uh, but as I said, I, we're really keen to work closely with other um, countries to push CCS forward. So on my uh, next slide, which should be slide um, 37, uh, one example um, of this is that uh, the UK is co-hosting uh, an international CCS summit uh, with the International Energy Agency uh, in November, uh, on the 28th of November uh, in Edinburgh. Um, what this will do is it will have both a summit and a conference. Um, the summit will bring together uh, energy ministers from around the world to look at how we can uh, scale up these with globally, um, and it will also involve uh, CEOs of, um, of industries as well. Alongside this, we'll be having a CCS conference to bring together uh, policymakers uh, and experts from industry and academia um, to do deep dives into uh, particular topics within CCS, uh, again, for how we can uh, accelerate the deployment uh, globally. So on the uh, next slide, I thought I'd mention another form of international collaboration, which is to do with uh, the use of official development assistance. Um, we have in the UK, um, International Climate Finance, which is covering uh, climate change mitigation uh, in emerging economies and uh, developing countries. Uh, our current spend profile is 5.85 billion uh, over 2016 to 2021, um, which share, delivers the UK share uh, of the $100 billion per year uh, by 2020 climate finance commitment uh, under the Paris Agreement. Now on the next slide, uh, which is slide 39, um, a, a chunk of this um, goes towards uh, CCUS, and this is one of our uh, long-running programs, uh, which has been running uh, since uh, 2012, and we joined uh, the World Bank CCUS Trust Fund um, in 2012. Uh, we also have um, a similar amount of money in the Asian Development Bank uh, CCUS Fund. Um, so in, as, as alluded to uh, previously, uh, the work through the World Bank has primarily supported Mexico and South Africa. Um, we're also keen to see uh, as many countries uh, support as possible um, under this, and, we, and we've, we're also looking to scale up our activities with um, current countries. Uh, so, for example, we recently 
uh, extended our World Bank funding by 10 million with an extra five million pounds going towards uh, the Mexico uh, pilot projects, particularly the Puerto Rica uh, gas power plant um, and the enhanced oil recovery projects that were alluded to uh, before. The sorts of work that um, our funding goes towards is primarily technical assistance. So, for example, this is setting up speed to a centers of excellence, um, undertaking training and knowledge share and events, uh, capacity building workshops, um, with one of the primary aims of that type of workshop is to help to develop the policy and regulatory framework, uh, for example, for CO2 storage or, or CO2 capture for particular industries um, to enable C2S2 uh, to move forward. So on the, uh, the next slide, the only thing I want to sort of mention on this, uh, this slide, which is slide 40, um, is that uh, we have an annual review that we publish um, every year, which um, assesses the landscape of um, of, of our support internationally and looks at what's going well, what's not, what's not going so well, lessons learned, um, where, where we can improve. Um, and I think if anyone wants to understand our program in more detail in one, uh, in one document, that's a, that's a good one to, to look at. And I've included the link um, there. So on the next slide, which is slide 41, um, I'll probably be brief on this because uh, all of this has actually already been covered in the uh, the previous um, the pre previous speaker's uh, presentation. Um, but as I said, we're primarily supporting the technical assistance aspects of the work in Mexico. Um, so this includes feasibility studies and developing regulatory frameworks. A lot of this was under phase one, um, and under phase two, uh, it's more looking at how we can um, start to build the uh, pilot project, both the, the capture pilot that was mentioned, the storage pilot. Um, but also we're looking to see how uh, we can further support Mexico um, going forward. So my final slide is uh, slide 42. So on this one, I thought it'd be useful to talk about very briefly what the UK is doing itself. Um, so apart from you know, all the, the work we're doing internationally to support other countries, uh, you might be interested to know what we're doing. Um, so we recently uh, published our clean growth strategy, which looks at how to decarbonize uh, the UK economy um, across all the different sectors. Um, and within that, we published our new uh, approach to C2S uh, policy. Uh, so we have an ambition to deploy C2S at scale uh, in the UK during the 2030s. Uh, and we'll be uh, publishing a deployment pathway uh, to achieve this by the end of this year. Um, we see the role of innovation and innovation funding crucial. Um, so some of the, the key barriers to uh, C2S that are experienced globally are things like cost and how do we reduce the cost. And through innovative uh, technologies and processes, we've seen um, companies such as Carbon Clean Solutions um, who have developed uh, technologies that have managed to reduce the cost to, think, to uh, less than $40 a ton for things like um, industrial carbon capture uh, and utilization. So we're interested to look at these commercial models and how they stack up. Um, so we've to date um, already provided 130 million pounds invested in C2S RD and D to look at uh, these issues. Um, and we also have a further 100 million pounds for C2S uh, and industry, um, as well as the 70 million pound official development assistance uh, fund that I mentioned before. Um, but we're looking to work more closely um, through these international initiatives. Um, and I'd be happy to speak to, to others after if you want to contact me um, to talk about what the UK is doing internationally to support other countries uh, further. I just want to take this opportunity to thank um, everyone for this opportunity to present. Um, and I will hand back over to Katie. Thank you. Wonderful. Um, thank you to each of our panelists for those outstanding presentations. As we shift to the question and answer session, I just would like to remind our attendees to please submit the questions pane at any time. And for the questions that we don't have an opportunity to get to today, we'll connect with those attendees offline after the webinar since we only have a few minutes remaining. Um, we've had some great questions from the audience that we'll use the remaining time to answer and discuss. And I'll direct each of the questions to um, one of the panelists, but please feel free to, for everyone else, to jump in and add your comments as well. Our first question is for Mr. Beltran. Um, this attendee would like to know, can you expand upon the Mexican mandatory CCUS standard? 
Will it include other large emitting industries beyond energy? Uh, thanks very much, Katie. Yeah, um, regarding the uh, legal framework, uh, in our energy reform, uh, there was the uh, enactment of uh, a electric power industry law in which um, we classified uh, this technology as uh, a clean technology. So with uh, that in mind, for the uh, participants of the electricity market, they are able to uh, qualify their, their CCS projects as uh, clean, and with that, um, they would be able to receive uh, clean energy certificates. So that's uh, the, the, the first item uh, to promote uh, this technology for the power sector. Regarding um, the uh, mandatory standards, uh, the uh, Ministry of Environment or uh, Environmental Protection, Mexican Environmental Protection Agency, uh, has developed this uh, mandatory standard in which uh, they have to comply uh, with certain regulation uh, regarding. Uh, you know, uh, respecting the baseline uh, in terms of um, what it's uh, uh, in the location uh, of the project, uh, what's the fauna, what's the flora, what's, um, uh, you know, the different uh, settings or the uh, ecosystem there, that it's not affected in case of uh, a leakage. and uh, there is a prescription on uh, how to develop uh, redundancies to reduce uh, the uh, potential environmental footprint of this uh, technology in case of accidents. Uh, and there's a voluntary standard um, to uh, 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 try to incorporate this technology in uh, in industrial processes and uh, uh, you know in general terms in industrial processes today it's just a, a voluntary standard uh, but eventually uh, once uh, we we are uh, in, uh, we're implementing uh, let me take that back uh, in 2020 uh, we are going to uh, set up the carbon um, market uh, with uh, collaboration and interaction with uh, North America. And uh, once this uh, carbon market is uh, implemented, most probably uh, these voluntary standards will become uh, mandatory standards to comply with uh, the opportunities and the obligations of the carbon uh, market that is being set up in North America. And of course, Wonderful. if there's a, if there's a need to uh, carry on with the conversation, uh, you know, we you can share with uh, with the participants our emails and and we can have a, a, a private conversation. Wonderful, thank you so much. I think we may have time for one more question. Um, this question is for Diego. Diego, can you provide us with a timeline of the projects to be executed by the Mexican Center? Sure, uh, I, I will provide you with a time on how we are starting to do this because the, the CMCC US, as we call it, uh, was awarded to us in the month of maybe three months ago of June. And at this moment, we are in the process of signing and formalizing with the National uh, Center for, uh, with the National Commission for, for Science and Technology, which will be done probably in October. And uh, also at this moment, we are working with the World Bank in order to find all the resources and to make the, the the changes in budget and, and request to the Minister of, of Finance, the Minister of Hacienda of Mexico, and all of these issues. 
So the idea is to start a very relevant work in, in 2019. Of course, the center as a, as a whole, a, with the money that has been allowed for it, for research and all the topics, is expected to, to work for four years of, of, of development. A, the exact times on which we will have the, the, the pilot projects operational will be before that. But I, I will not venture a date today uh, because all, all the elements that we need in order to, to be able to start. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, again, for all the questions that we didn't get to, we will follow up with those, atten those attendees offline after the webinar. And I'd like to extend a thank you to our expert panelists today and to all of our attendees for participating in today's webinar. We very much appreciate your time and hope in return that you have some valuable insights that you can take back to your ministries, departments, or organizations. Please enjoy the rest of your day, and we hope to see you again at future CCUS events. This concludes our webinar.